we all all know the problems we have. Uh, two, three days ago, they printed the Chronicle, and I called Linda's attention to it, that this past year, 72,000 Americans had died of old age. 72,000. Think about that a moment. That's a, the size of the whole city of Tyler. 72,000 people lost their life for old age. Most of it was that, what's that, opioids? Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's, let's see what the Lord said. Revelation 18, verse 17. Let's read these uh, scriptures here. For in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster, and the company, all the company and ships, sailors, and many as trained by a sea stood afar off. And they cried when they saw the smoke of the burning, burning of the system of Babylon, saying, What is a city like unto this great city? And that Babylon, to me, is my understanding, it's the one world system. The stock markets and everything are going to be tied together, and they already are. But in the one world system, as it's tied together, uh, but again, let's read verse 18 again. And they cried when they saw the smoke of her, Babylon, burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried and weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, Alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by the reason of her cultiveness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thy heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took a stone, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with great with violence shall that great city, Babylon, be thrown down, shall be found no more at all. And the voice of the harpers and musicians and the pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. The voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were great, the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Now the word sorcery is a Greek word, pharmakia, uh, which means enchantment of drugs, what have you. Sorcery in the Bible covered a lot of things. It covered witchcraft. But primarily it had to do with the pharmacy or the drugs. But it says, For by thy sorcerers were all nations deceived. Verse 24. And her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. This did during that great tribulation period. Now Revelation 9 verse 21. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, drug use, nor of their fornication, nor of their theft. In Revelation 22 verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end first and the last. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter into the great, the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Now, I think we need to discuss this as a group this evening because of so much drug that's been involved. Now, Brother Bobby brings people to church with him on a continual basis from rehab place. People that are trying to throw that manner of life off. We've got two men that came back a while back and both of them are back out into the world now. They've got some checks coming in and uh, they fell off the wagon, if you will. But they fall into the category of what we have here. But 
in Revelation 18:23, the, the, the Greek word pharmakia, and keep that in mind, it's, our English word is pharmacy. Uh, and the, the word sorcerer again, witchcraft, it's referred to 27 times in the Bible. And it was always forbidden. Those who practice it. And the last five times in the Bible, drug users and drug pushers are condemned out there in the, in the Word. And that one verse we read a moment ago in Revelation 21, verse 8. Let's read that now. That's left on our scripture here. The very bottom of the page. But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable or hateful, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, drug pushers, if you will, and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So you can talk to people about drugs and you give them the warning that it, it robs them of life itself. Uh, you see these people out on the street uh, panhandling. Most of them have an alcohol or drug problem. Not all. I know some that are mental cases out there. Uh, but the problem's there. Uh, they're condemned in the Scripture. And in Revelation 22, verse 15, again, if you look back at uh, next to the bottom there, it says, well, For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh the lie. But the effects of the abusive use of drugs is awful in our day. One becomes a slave to that stuff. They'll do anything on earth to get it. Uh, my first cousin, I mentioned Sunday about those on the check, but she's the first one to check out and our grandkids together. And she died at 37, but she came to the church I was pastoring up in the country up here and was saved and baptized and thank the Lord she she got rid of her heroin thing. But she had been to California, she went left as a teenage girl, 17, and hit the streets and I said, Thank you, Sue. I said, How'd you get all those drugs? She said, I did whatever it took to get them. They, they just don't care. They live for that stuff. She lived with a guy down here in downtown Houston and I read this in the papers and you know like they do just they, people they just live together nowadays well, this is several years ago and he beat her unmercifully he blacked her eyes and everything he beat her up pitifully and she barricaded herself into the bathroom and he was knocking the door down and she took a gun and emptied it through the door and they no billed her it means they didn't care to try because they saw how battered she was and uh, but anyway that all came through drugs and what have you she had one child and i helped his funeral a couple years later he was 38 when he committed suicide he had a drinking problem like her with a drug problem and couldn't put it down he had a wife and three kids and uh, his wife went over and talked to him. They had been separated. And he said, oh, I'll let you down again. I got fired on my new job today. And anyway, as she was leaving, driving the car off, she heard the shots. And he had killed himself. Mm -hmm. But it was all because of drugs and alcohol stuff. Uh, it destroyed that family. Uh, but one may do some drastic things. Some years ago up in Leaf, Chicago, there was a fellow that killed like eight nurses at one time. He was all drugged up. Y'all remember that? Yeah. And there was one hid under the bed or some, somewhere that got by him, and she was able to identify the guy. But they said he was just blown up with drug use when he was killing old nurses. He killed eight. But that kind of stuff was a person wouldn't do in their natural mind. They had that, they put those demons in them. That's what it amounts to. Uh, but one's mind is affected greatly by it. 
and people will steal whatever it takes to satisfy that uh, hunger they have for that stuff. And a lot of times they take their own life. But the increase of drug use, I believe, is a sign of the latter day that we're living in. And we read here a moment ago where the nation of the earth and the world of system fell. And I believe the stock market gonna crash. I firmly believe that during that tribulation period. And that describes it the crash of the stock market. Well, I think the real problem, the real problem we have today is not uh, illicit drugs. It's uh, drugs that doctors are given to people and psychiatrists. And You're right. Yes. You're right. I, I, I'm sold on that all together. Yeah. They got a pill for everything. Yeah. And that, that's sad. But we asked the question, why does a person uh, become an addict? And I suppose there's several different answer, answers to that, sometimes unaware. Kids will start off uh, backing one another out, and I will if you will. Uh, you know, and then uh, before you know it, at least that's the way boys did it. Uh, I'll drink a beer if you will. But uh, sometimes they do it to go along with the game. And sometimes they're a quest for peace of mind and a life of turmoil when trouble come in every direction. People tend to turn to something like that to help escape reality. Well, truth and reality are one and the same. You can't escape truth. Because it is reality. But God offers a solution to us that in His Son. He is our peace. And folk, if, if we get to know Him, then that peace comes. It can be found nowhere else. I don't care where you go, you can't find it in drugs or alcohol. But with violence, the governments would be torn down. We read that a moment ago in Revelation 21, verse 8, and Revelation 9, 9 verse 21. There's coming a time where this, I uh, used to call it rock and roll music, but nowadays, uh, what's that? Rap music is kind of taking over, but y'all ever hear some of the languages they're using? And I can't hear very well, but every now and then I'll pick up some magic and add birds that all might be. And they, they do it wide open. <clears throat> the good thing about it, that stuff's going to stop. <laughs> I wanted to turn this stuff off myself when I hear it. Uh, factories are going to shut down according to what this tells us. The lights are going out. As uh, Dandy Don Merritt that used to on Monday Night Football, he said that they're going to say the party's over. And the party's going to be over for the people that don't know the Lord. Folk, that's where it's just getting started, cranked up for us. Because it's going to be a reunion day. And all this stuff that we've gone through uh, is going to be past tense. The winds we read of a moment ago, it says they shall cease. Thou was not going to entertain any more of those at that time. And all this is going to be during the Great Tribulation period. And of course, uh, Jesus still saves the drug user as a murderer, as a liar, as a thief, and all others if they'll turn to him, won't they? I have, I have to say, you've heard me say it before, he, he, he never turned the first one away that came to him. He said, Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Well, that's the kind of friend we need in trouble, isn't it? But 
this, as you mentioned a moment ago, that the doctors are prescribing that stuff right and left. I've been around some doctors, but I had one of my own personal doctor years ago. I called a doctor one night late at night. My boy got stung with a ball right between the eyes. He was sick and his eyes were swelling together. Uh, and I called Dr. Bell and said, Doctor, I said, My uh, boy, he, he's asked me a favor. And he knew I knew him and knew his. He had some problems himself. He had to quit practice for a long time himself. He took a worldwide tour. But he was president of the Texas Medical Foundation. He was over all the other doctors. But he asked me that night when I asked him to come to the hospital, he said, I'm just not able to come. He said, could you find it? Could you get someone else to look after him this time? Uh, but I've seen him before. Rather than have to come down, he just tell the nurses, go ahead and give them a shot. Just go ahead, whatever they want, let them have it. Of course, you and I both know what happened to that when, when that, a doctor starts that. The drug companies find out pretty quick, and uh, one of London's doctors and I ran down here off of Long Point, and this had been years ago, uh, was arrested, and he showed uh, his assistant that he had written us a number of prescriptions for a different thing. She wasn't, didn't have license to do that. She was a physician's assistant, but you got to go to school to order to write prescription like she would do. Arrested her. But then a few days later an undercover agent went in and asked the doctor to prescribe something for him and he wrote it down and they put handcuffs on him and carried him into the and they had the TV station down there waiting on him, letting him know they're gonna arrest this doctor. Hmm. What happened is a doctor legally is not supposed to write you a prescription unless he examines you. And he didn't bother to examine him, he just took the man's word for it that's what he needed. He wrote a prescription for it. But the sad part of it is, is that's the day we live in. You go down to one of these emergency rooms, hang around long, and you'll find they have some of the same customers night after night. They go in and get a paint shop, and they've learned that if they come back within so many hours, they don't have to pay another visit to the emergency room. They just give them another shot. They don't really get dressed and they go back home. But you go into these emergency rooms and they're pretty well all the same. 